Hi friends, hope you are all doing well. Today we begin lecture three on this aerospace engineering class. And today I'm going to discuss the standard atmosphere. I'm Dr. Anjan Ganguly. Now we see that the standard atmosphere is actually a definition which has been obtained from experiments. And one of the reasons this atmosphere is chosen or selected is because we need some kind of common reference to compare flight tests, wind tunnel tests, airplane design, and also to even give problems and solved examples in textbooks. So essentially what this means is that when you are specified a certain height, you want to know at that height the temperature, the density, the pressure of the air. And this of course, as you know, as you go to any mountain, the temperature decreases and so that's one of the things which is trying to be captured by the standard atmosphere graph. So here I have drawn the standard atmosphere and on the x-axis you have the temperature in Kelvin and on the y-axis you have the altitude in kilometer where the altitude is h. So we know that temperature is going to be a function of h and so this line here this zigzag line is actually the function which defines the standard atmosphere. So let's look at it in more detail. So at H is zero, which is the sea level, the height is zero. And so the temperature is 288.16 Kelvin. Then the temperature decreases as you go up to about 11 kilometers and it's 216.66 Kelvin. Now this is typically the realm between zero to 11 kilometers where most of the mountains and the cities in mountains and all are situated. So we often see this kind of temperature decrease as we go up to any hill station or any mountainous location. Now, if you go from this point 11 kilometers to 25 kilometers, rather surprisingly, the temperature remains constant at 216.66 K and after 25 kilometers to 47 kilometers even more surprisingly the temperature is actually increasing to 282.66 K. Now at this point again there is this constant temperature region from 47 to 53 kilometers and after 53 kilometers again we get a decrease all the way to 79 kilometers and there the temperature is 165.66 Kelvin. Now here again there is a constant region to 90 kilometers and then there is rather surprisingly one more increase to 225.66 Kelvin. So now these two type of regions the region which is constant it is known as the isotherms or the isothermal region because the temperature is remaining constant and the region where the temperature is changing in the straight line form this is known as the gradient region and these parameters a1 a2 a3 a4 are giving you the slopes of these lines in the gradient region so as you can see here this slope here is negative this slope here is positive again negative and again positive if you remember from calculus a line like this essentially has positive slope. So this is the standard atmosphere and we can actually immediately use the standard atmosphere to figure out the temperature at a given height. So if you have a problem where an aircraft is flying at 13 kilometers height then you can immediately figure out that the temperature should be 216.66 Kelvin. And if you have an aircraft which is flying say at six kilometers, then you have to get into this table and you have to interpolate here. So you have to see this line and you have to interpolate here. So sometimes there are actually tables for that. So that's often specified at the end of books. For example, in the flight mechanics area and so on. So now that we know the temperature, we essentially know the function T equals TH. 
And the next thing we need to do is we need to find P equals pH and rho equals rho H. That is the density and the pressure. So to do that, we resort to two equations. The first equation is the hydrostatic equation, which we derived in our previous lecture. So if you do not know about this, go to lecture two and you are going to see the hydro static equation which is tp is negative rho g0 dh the other equation i have is the equation of state for a perfect gas that is p is rho rt and fortunately air meets the conditions for this equation so we can use this here where r is the gas constant so if i divide these two i get dp by p is negative rho g0 dh by rho rt and that gives me negative g0 by rt into dh so i get this nice looking equation here and you can clearly see this now relates pressure temperature and height provided we know g0 and r so the equation actually changes depending on the region you are in so like i mentioned before in the standard atmosphere graph the regions which are constant temperature regions they are known as isothermal region so let us assume we are in the isothermal region and we have two points we have one point with all the subscript ones here so h1 t1 p1 and rho1 are the different values at this particular point and then at some point here you have h t p and rho so what i can do is i can take this equation which i derived in the previous slide and i can integrate this between these two points so i essentially integrate it from p1 to p so here the pressure was p1 here the pressure is p and on the right hand side i integrate from h1 to h so again that is the altitude here and this is the altitude here so immediately from calculus i know that when you have dp by p you get a log and so i can write this equation out here these are definite integrals which you easily obtain so now when i get this again you take the exponential function on both sides you can write p by p1 is e to the power of minus g0 by rt h minus h1 so essentially this lets you calculate the pressure at point here provided you know pressure at point one so what we are going to do we are going to move up on these lines and then you can essentially use these equations to calculate the pressure at all the points in the isothermal layers now let's look at the density part so if you want to look at density we want to know rho is a function of h so we turn to again the isothermal layer here we have these two points just like in the slide before the point with subscript one which is at the beginning of the layer and then at some point the point with no subscripts which is the general point and now i write the equation of state at two points remember the equation of state can be written at any particular point i divide these two equations and so i get rho by rho 1 is p by p1 which means i can essentially write a similar equation here rho by rho 1 is e to the power minus g0 by rt h minus h1 so that's the density so now we have done the easy part which was the isothermal layer now let us look at the gradient layer or the gradient region now in the gradient region again at the starting you have these values for h t p and rho subscript one and then in a general region you have h t p and rho no subscript and now you have something else we have the lapse rate which is given by a so remember that's the slope of this line which i have drawn in blue so you can write several equations from this itself and so on so let's write the first equation here we can see that if we know the temperature here at these two points and we know the height at these two points i can immediately calculate the lapse rate so the lapse rate is nothing but dt by dh or the slope of this line now i have the equation previously here this was a 
generic equation and so what I now do is I replace this dh by dt by a which is given here and so I can write it in this form here remember that a is the lapse rate so from this equation I can again do the integration as before and so I get log here log here because I have dt by t and I have dp by p and then I take exponentials on both sides and I get this equation here which is p by p1 equals t by t1 to the power of negative g0 by ar. So very interesting now and you have the lapse rate coming into this equation along with g0 and r. So depending on the different type of regions you have, remember you had four regions in that standard atmosphere graph, this is going to give us different equations or rather the same equations with different values of a. So now let's look at the density part. So again we have taken the same diagram and now you have the gradient region here. So I write this equation here which I got in the previous slide and now I use the equation of state to write p is rho rt and p1 is rho 1 rt1. So I get this equation here and then you can move the t1 and t to the right hand side. You cancel the two r's and so you get this nice looking equation here. So you get rho by rho 1 equals t by t1, the whole thing to the power of negative and this thing inside the brackets g0 by ar plus 1. So the plus 1 has come because this extra term has moved on this side and so it's also got a negative on it and therefore I got this equation here. So you can use this to calculate the density rho if you know the density rho 1 and you know t and t1. So remember the temperatures are always coming to us from the standard atmosphere definition. So always remember that t as a function of h is known. Now in most cases you don't actually have to memorize the standard atmosphere but some people do it so there's no harm if you at least know the various regions and if your professor wants you to know the standard atmosphere completely and doesn't give you a reference then you may need to actually memorize that particular graph. So now let's look at the temperature issue like I mentioned here in these gradient regions we have a clear lapse rate definition. The lapse rate is defined as the slope of this line here so dt by dh gives you a and so I can integrate this and if I integrate this I get immediately this equation here so t is t1 plus a h minus h1 so this you can immediately even realize from coordinate geometry is that if I wanted to find t and I knew t1 then I take the lapse rate and I multiply it by h minus h1 so essentially you can calculate the temperature value at any point on this line simply by knowing the lapse rate and the difference in the height so if somebody gives you for example the height is six kilometers or something like that you can and you know the values at the sea level then you can very easily calculate the temperature at this point through the standard atmosphere so the bottom line here is of course you need to know something to start this process and what you need to know is actually the sea level value. So the sea level value is like a reference point and from this reference point essentially we built up the standard atmosphere. Now how was the standard atmosphere obtained? It's actually coming from various experiments. So experiments are often for example done in balloons and by different type of air vehicles or air systems which do not actually perturb the atmosphere itself. So you need to have something which is very static, which is pretty dormant and through that you can take measurements in the atmosphere and through that the standard atmosphere was obtained. So Ts or the temperature at sea level is 288.16 Kelvin. So rho s is 1.225 kg per meter cube. So this is often a value of density we take in all our calculations. And P s is 1.01325 into 10 to the power of 5 Newton per meter square. Now any of you will see that this temperature is kind of on the lower side. And that's something we need to keep in mind. 
Now, tables of the standard atmospheres can be calculated from the equation. Like I mentioned before, if you start from the standard sea level value, you start going in the first line or the gradient region, you can calculate at each point the temperature and then from there you can calculate the different quantities such as pressure and density also. So it's very easy to actually write a computer program to do all this. So if you are somebody who is interested in coding, I would encourage you to write a program in any of your favorite computer language, be it Python, C, C++, MATLAB, Julia, or even Fortran. And then you can easily obtain the different values for the standard atmosphere. And also this is given in many of the textbooks in the aerospace and the flight mechanics type of fields. Now, one of the things, of course, is that the standard atmosphere is based on experiments. And as you can imagine, these experiments were performed in the temperate region. So these are in relatively cold climate. So you have temperatures such as 15 degrees centigrade and so on. So these temperatures would not be applicable to cities, for example, such as Mumbai or Phoenix or Finland in the winter, for example. So these temperatures are given at this value. So do keep in mind that if you are designing something which is going to primarily function in a desert system or it's primarily going to function in any high altitude location, then you need to keep that in mind that you also take care of those particular temperature zones. We also saw that the atmosphere can be divided into this isothermal and gradient regions. The isothermal regions being the regions where the temperature was constant and the gradient regions being the region where the temperature was varying in a linear manner. So this was given by the lapse rate. And like I mentioned before, it's useful for textbook calculations and design. So whenever you have a problem and somebody specifies to you that the airplane is flying at nine kilometers or 7.3 kilometers for that matter, you are able to immediately calculate the temperature value because you know the sea level values. And once you calculate the temperature value, you can also calculate the pressure and the density value. And therefore you are able to get a lot of information about the flow field just by knowing the standard atmosphere. So this was my video for today about the standard atmosphere. As I mentioned before, it's a defined value and it's a definition which is often very useful for us. Do note that in research, some people have propounded some different standard atmospheres also based on different regions of the world and so on. But I don't think that really makes a huge impact here. Fundamentally, the point is that you need to have a good idea about the variation of temperature through the atmosphere, which is largely captured here. And some of the differences are going to be, of course, in the baseline value. So what do you exactly choose as your sea level value? That's something which is going to be important in this calculation. So I'll end this video here and I will see you in a video sometime soon. See you then.